In this video, I'll be covering four recently added additions to Strava, three of which are for paid subscribers. One is for everyone, kicking straight off into the details with route building or editing is now available in 3D. Loading up a route I've used many times before in my Strava videos, the Mount Porpunka Gravel Loop out of Bright in the Victorian High Country. I'll click on edit for that. We'll load this up and doesn't really look like much at all, does it? And if we uh, have a look at the terrain, it looks pretty flat. Um, I can tell you it's not flat. If we click on elevation profile, there's quite the hill in the middle. But if we want to bring that alive now, we can click on show 3D terrain. And the magic appears. There's the hill right there. Now using some crafty mouse clicking, I think it's control, yes it is, on the Mac and scrolling around, you can now see the hills. Depending on the system you're using is how smooth this will actually scroll around. But you can see the route there that I've created. Uh, the blue lines are the global heat map, which I still have turned on. But if I wanted to edit this route and say, look, that's not enough of a hill for me for today. Let's go over to Clearview. We can add that to the route by simply clicking, I think Clearview is about there. Boom, adds that. We can scroll in, have a look, and there's a lot more climbing to be done back into town. Oop, click back into town. There we go. Okay, it's taking me straight back down there. And looking at the elevation profile, there it is. Well, that's one hell of a climb right there, 29%. That may be the hang gliding launching spot. Do watch for that when creating routes. The second new feature is personalized heat maps and now on Strava Mobile. This is a Strava Mobile, obviously, feature, subscriber feature, and global heat maps have always been available on the maps, as you can show them as an overlay, but personal heat maps are now there. Now it's almost on any map that I can find on here. So, for example, I have Mark O'Brien's right here. Marco's doing quite a few Ks at the moment. And uh, we click on Marco's map, we dive into the map, and just as you can show standard, satellite, and hybrid views, Global heat map is there, and down below we have my heat map. So let's click that, and it will show where I have ridden nearby where Marco has gone. Uh, and from that, you can pretty much determine the suburbs I used to live in and how many Ks we did. There's some good riding out that way for sure. So personalized heat maps are available. You can customize those too by changing color, uh, red, conflicts with the red GPS lines. We can go over and make those uh, blue or purple, let's go purple. Um, we can also do a few other things, change the sport or activity type, uh, when. So we have some options there, custom date range or by year, let's go all time. And there are a few toggle boxes down below there that you can dive into at your leisure. But there we go, heat maps are now shown on any maps. Same goes for, uh, if you click over on the maps option, and go to say Adelaide, which I was searching for before. Let's just say I'm in Adelaide, wanna go for an 80K ride. We can check the overlays and add my heat maps there and maybe have a look at where I haven't ridden before. So you can see a lot of time there in the Adelaide Hills and about. Uh, one thing to watch with this though is that the maps will overlay on top of your heat map. So you, if you've done the loop before, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm not quite sure how useful this is, but I guess just as a, you know, throw your eye across where you've ridden before or where you haven't, it might be interesting. Um, and all heat maps is shown as well. So if you skip over to Perth, again, river loops in Perth, brilliant riding over in Perth. So from there, you can plan out another route and see where you've been before. Personal heat maps now in Strava Mobile. Next up was a bit of a sneaky rollout by Strava to around 50% of their users last week. It's now on all Strava users, both paid subscribers and free users. And this gives us the ability to mute activities from public feeds. This is on Strava Mobile. I expect to see it on Strava Web soon too. It's for everybody. And it allows you to stop your activities from appearing on the public feeds or timelines of your followers or Strava groups that you're in. Now the activity can still be viewed if you go to your profile so I wouldn't call this a privacy setting as such. I'd call it more of a, let's just stop spamming our friends that I'm taking the dog for a walk or riding on Zwift every single day. Let's have a look at what that's all about. Today's ride, Bo Peep Loop, my activity. We click on the activity itself, up the top, edit activity. You scroll right into the bottom there and mute activity. Clicking on the little eye will bring up a little bit more information about how this works. 
in summary being it will hide from people's feeds, it will still be on your profile. Also worth noting down the bottom, hence why they put the note down the bottom, that all muted activities will still count towards your 12 week progress chart, goals and competitions you participate in. So these are still public activities, they are not hiding them from anybody, they're just hiding them from advertising on your friends feeds and public group feeds. The default setting for this for any new activity is off. So you need to manually go into every single activity or every new activity you upload and toggle that mute activity on if you don't want it advertised on other people's feeds or those group feeds. I would love there to be a default on activity type, such as walking or hiking or something that's maybe recorded with a watch and the activity doesn't even touch the phone or the Strava web. A lot of those times you just record those little short walks for your own statistics, but you don't wanna spam everybody's feed. I would love that as an option. I know I've done a ton of Llama lab tests lately and everybody's being spammed by those. Having the ability to just mute those by default would be brilliant. Anyhow, maybe an update for them in the future. The fourth and final new feature added to Strava, which I'll be covering today, is that surface type has been added to stat maps. And I do love this, I think it's super cool, but it's just missing one small, uh, I'll get to the detail. So it's on Strava Mobile and Strava Web. It's a subscriber only feature. Look, stat maps have been evolving since their introduction with hashtags in the description field. That was very clunky. I've done a full video on how you can now enable those with the checkboxes or the drop down selection box on Strava Mobile and Strava Web. This one is super neat, but limited. Let me show you why. So pulling up my Creswick Forest Grav Ride from the other day, you can see there, it's just a solid red line. I'd like you to believe it's all gravel, but it's actually not. Let's have a look at what the truth is in this ride by adding the surface type to it. Edit activity, same as before to change the stat map, stat map type. Free Strava users do have the ability to use the featured maps, but subscribers get access to the personalized stat maps. And as we've covered before, we have speed, temperature, time, gradient, power, you get some previews of those, and surface type is what it's all about for this one. Being a grav ride, I'd hope most of that is gravel, but it's actually quite difficult to see. Anyway, well, let's click on done, click on update activity, boom. However, this is kind of limited. The stat maps are only available in the feed preview because when you click on the map to really dive in and see what's going on, they disappear. Oh, my personal heat maps are back on, that's kind of cool. Um, so it's kind of limited there. You'll only be able to give a preview of a ride. So if somebody else has posted a ride and they've remembered to put on this surface type, you can't dive in and see what's gravel and what's not. So it's a little limited because the owner of the activity needs to enable this. I think this stat map should be the default. No big solid red lines. There's no need to put a solid line over a gravel road or anything like that. I think they should add this to all maps, to all GPS lines, and then add stat maps on top of those for colors. That would make a lot of sense. And on top of that, if they could add the stat maps when we go into the map itself, like to here, and show that, so we can have the stat maps shown, so for elevation or temperature or speed or whatever we wanna do for stat maps, we can have the surface type shown for rides, and we can dive in a little bit more to find out exactly what's gravel and what's paved. That would take this cool feature and make it super cool. Anyhow, just my ideas on that one. So there are the four new updates to Strava rolled out in the last two weeks or so. I hope you found this video informative. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And as always, to support this channel, hit that subscribe button. That really helps out. Thanks for watching.